Hello everyone and welcome back to Local Chat. That's right, it's a podcast starring me, your host, Will Crosby. It is episode 43. It is the 28th of October. I almost said December. Joining me today, the man, the myth, the legend, Kyle Bailey. It's me. It's just me. It's just you. I was going to make a joke also joining us, but there is no one else. Ian is on assignment, as they say in the business. Uh, He is definitely not guilty of everything accused of him. Uh, And the Twitter. No, nothing's accused of Ian. He's never done anything wrong except had bad opinions. (laughs) Um, There was an article, I don't know if you saw it going around on Twitter, that said. I can't remember the title of it, so I'm butchering this for anyone listening or watching. But it was like, The Hero's Journey, How Dune is Basically Just Star Wars, is the title of the article. And then the first sentence is, Now, I haven't seen either of these films, but... <laughs> that's, that's how you know that publication just said, <laughs> let's find two fandoms that we can equally offend and just put the most the volatile title we can think of on this article and just put it out there for oh, it was so bad it was so bad um i haven't seen dune yet i am excited i'm going in imax um the good imax on monday so in, that'll uh, be nyc yeah in lincoln square or lincoln lincoln square yeah lincoln, lincoln yeah. 13 i have gone to that one many times i've seen Dunkirk, I saw 2001 A Space Odyssey, I saw The Dark Knight. Um, it's it's the best IMAX that there is. It's so Sweet. good. I, yeah, I've been to that theater for other stuff. And then Dunkirk I saw in whatever millimeter they showed it in. In, a, in, a, in the theater, there's like an artsy theater across the street. Oh, probably like 65 millimeter. Yeah, I think it was. And then actually 2001 A Space Odyssey... Just Karen and I, she watched for the first time uh, last week. I didn't, that movie's rated G, which is not something Uh, you see very often. I mean, Gremlins is rated PG. That's true. Isn't it like War Games was rated R when it came out? Was it? It's something like that, and there's like nothing wrong with it at all. It's, It's a great movie. I love that. Yeah, it is really. Um... Cadell Cadell says he loved Dune. Also, hello, and that it's a slow burning, uh, five out of seven. Perfect. What is that? Or I think (laughs) five five of seven. I don't. On May seventh, it'll be perfect. (laughs) Do you mean that it's slow burning, as in like the the first like two thirds of it are pretty slow? We'll have to we'll have to wait and see. Uh, yes, uh, so I'm excited to go see that. I saw the new James Bond, which um, I thought was good. It's, uh, it's fun. Yes. It's fine. I, I wonder if uh, we should do a, I guess not a spoiler chat, but I want to talk to you about it because I think if they swapped the plot points and villains of Spectre and No Time to Die, it would have been a better final movie. Yeah, I think having Blofeld as the the end game um would have been great but instead yeah. we have Staffin who's like Just, i feel like and th- no spoilers but um i feel like he starts off really interesting like he's got a really unique angle and then by the end of it it's like oh it's like standard bond villain fan. yeah I, and i think the if the fourth movie was all about leah sado character background and then the fifth movie was how her background ties into james bond's background like i think that would have been a better lead up but obviously they can't um they can't fix that but i um i i like part of me wants to take both those movies and edit them together and like alter everything but do 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 a do a topher grace fan edit yes um also al clarified what he meant he said it's the old meme of like five out of seven. Uh, what is it? Five out of seven or five, seven, seven, seven out of 10 with rice. Is, is it that kind oh, of a thing? Oh, is it that meme? I think, I think that's what 
he's talking about. Oh, you okay. may have to clarify even further. Out yeah, we're idiots. May just be, we if you could provide a link dumb. to the uh, what's that website that explains memes? Uh, Wiki uh, meme, Wiki feet. <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> Wiki um, folks, we're going to talk about video games, not just movies. Uh, even though I love talking about movies, I watched Friday the Thirteenth last night for the first nice. time. That was a pretty good movie. Um, I've never seen it. You know, it's it's not. It's not as bad as most first horror movies are. Like I, that's fair. Yeah, you know, Halloween was okay. Friday the Third. Ha- Halloween, Halloween, the original Halloween. Yeah, was was solid because it's so simple. It's, it's just, like we look at we look at it now and we're like, why was that scary? And it was like I don't know. It was because they no one had done it before, which yeah. is the real reason. But also, uh, if you watch Friday the Thirteenth, it's on Peacock. Uh, Peacocktober, as we're celebrating this <laughs> this month, uh, or just Cocktober for short, if people don't want to say that's, the beginning. That's what I call it in my, yeah. in my house. <laughs> um, it's so it's on there. It's got ad breaks, but they're really like, honestly, like thirty seconds probably. Mm. But uh, that movie is, or those old Halloween or uh, scary movies are all like super long shots that are just characters doing things. It's like the girl, like, it's just a shot of the kitchen of the cabin and she just goes to, she goes to make tea and then she goes to like hide in a place and then she goes to move over and decides that's not a good place to hide. She's going to hide somewhere else. It's like, it's so weird because it's not something you see in main modern movies where it's just cut, 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 cut. It's just like these long, just shots uh, all the time. Like it just like way longer than you would expect them to be. And they're they're not really doing anything. They like get to the point eventually. That's just so weird because you're so used to like establishing shot, then cut into the close of her making tea, then cut to her seeing the the hiding spot, then cut to her trying the hiding spot, cut back to the main. Ro- like instead of that, it's just telling the whole story in one scene. It's it's weird to see that thing now, like with yeah, fresh I know- eyes. I know The Exorcist kind of does stuff like that, where there's a lot of lingering shots. Um, and I think that's just sort of a product of its time, where that's just that was just sort of the methodology. And now, of course, you think of like horror movies have sort of taken a book for, or a, a page from uh, um, Jason Bourne, where it's like quick cuts and like close ups and shaky cam. And totally. I just I don't know. But yeah. who knows? I mean, if, if, if you end up watching it, let me know, because it's definitely super weird i kind of want to yeah. watch the second one because part two's on on october as well so mm-hmm. i might check that out uh oh we're getting a update here from the basic recap is that some fellow on facebook named brendan acquired his own personal troll slash button pusher named robert who would critique his facebook status and comments oh, oh. i remember this I okay, I do remember this is screenshot so multiple examples in which <laughs> Brendan would post something and then Robert would make fun of it. One of Brendan's gems was to rate the movie Fight Club five out of seven. <laughs> so when Robert questioned him about the seven point scale, Brendan got cranky and said it reflected the, his opinion of the movie perfectly, which led to a bunch of other times of Robert going in to pop in and remind everyone that for Brendan, five equals seven. <laughs> anyway, I give it a perfect five out of seven. Isn't an actual quote from Brendan, but it is something that he might say if he followed his own unique. Oh, logic. folks. Thank you. Play Cadell. by play. That's for... good stuff us understanding the jokes um yes uh video games video games video games oh, yeah, I... those are a thing. what i said those are a thing I those forgot. are a thing um i haven't played a ton this week uh because i've been working a lot um i yeah i've been working a lot and i've been working on halloween stuff a lot so i haven't had time but i did play some games this week uh, I'm continuing my quest through Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. The game is super good, super fun. Uh, what is that about? I've never I've never played it. It is by the guy who made Castlevania. It is a modern, oh. pretty much modernized Symphony of the Night. Metroidvania. Okay. I can dig uh, it. It's silly. It's fun. Uh, it is $15 on Xbox right now. Definitely go play it. Uh, he also made Bloodstained, Rich, or Bloodstained Curse of the Moon 1 and 2, which are 
pretty much NES modernized versions of the NES uh, Castlevania games, uh, which cool. are also very, very fun. Uh, Ritual of the Night uh, uh, is... I'm, I think I'm almost done. I have two more areas. I just acquired the invert ability, so now I can invert myself and walk on the ceilings, uh, which is oh. very fun. Uh, it's kind of a play on how in Symphony of the Night, halfway through, you go to the inverted castle. Mm. So then you, but instead, in this game, you were the one who can invert at any time. So pretty neat. Um, that's it in that. And then today I started Forgotten City. I have not gotten very far in it. Uh, so I can't really talk about it too much. Uh, it is a time loop game, but it's less... Uh, you're not like constantly doing the time loop stuff. You just, if you mess up, you just go restart the day. Uh, it is based oh. off of a Skyrim mod that they were working on, and then they wanted to make a full game out of it, so they started making a game. It's, I, I believe, the Skyrim mod version of this. Uh, I don't know if it's a version of Forgotten City. I kind of lost the thread when people were talking about it, but the, I think they made a really amazing mod for Skyrim yeah expansion mod and then they went and made a game now which when you talk to people it's very like zoom into the person and they're the center of your screen <laughs> like uh, the like, oblivion kind of like what? yeah like oblivion skyrim sort of like super zoom it's great um but i'm really digging it it's got a cool premise you are a person who has stumbled into this roman city that was forgotten and there's a golden rule that if anyone commits a sin the entire city gets destroyed. Uh, oh. And so you have traveled there somehow and you are trying to, uh, and the magistrate of the place has tasked you with figuring out who is going to sin because they know someone's going to sin and cause the downfall of the city. And you are the perfect person to investigate because they can send you, he can do a ritual sacrifice to send you back if you mess up. So you are like going around talking to people, figuring out who's going to sin, what constitutes as a sin. Um, I immediately Did stole something. Sin? sin. It sounded like you said sim. And oh, like, sim. Hmm, What's a sim? <laughs> um, I, um, I immediately stole something and the game started ending. And so I had to like <laughs> run to the thing uh, to uh, do the ritual. I also... I, I chose it by accident. You could like choose your starting stuff and I didn't see what the other ones were, but my character, I chose the military bath background again by accident. So I have a gun mm. with 10 bullets and I, <laughs> I'm like, I want to, I want to shoot someone and see what happens. But also yeah. in order to send me back in time, the magistrate sacrifices himself at the altar so you can jump through the portal. So as soon as something goes wrong, you have to run to the portal because he kills himself and the portal uh -huh. opens and you can jump through. So I was Wait, trying so to what, figure... happens, what happens if you don't? I like don't know. Don't that run. I don't know. I assume game over or something will happen. And B, I wanted to just walk up to the magistrate and shoot him in the head and see what <laughs> happens. Like, is someone else going to sacrifice themselves? Like before he can sacrifice himself? Yeah, so... That's really um, interesting. I'm, I looked it up on Steam and it looks... Yeah, it, it's on it Game Pass, interesting, which yeah. is the reason I'm playing it. Um, oh, there's like gliders and stuff? Yeah, it's super... But I think the coolest thing is you don't know what a sin is. Nobody there knows what a sin is. So okay. like, I mean, uh, the obvious ones, but it's like people are like, oh, if I lie to someone, does that count? Like, they're not lying to anyone, but if it did happen... And on this, um, on your... When you talk to people in the Skyrim Oblivion fashion, it says a statement and then parentheses lie. And I haven't oh, chosen so it yet because of... I don't know if it's going to end the end the, the run. <laughs> because if I lie, does it, does it count as a sin? So it's like you figuring out, like, is suicide a sin? Like, if I drown yeah. myself, is that going to cause the end of all this stuff so so can you and this kind of sounds like something that maybe the developers would not include but can you like save before you do something um that's interesting there is there is a save and load mm -hmm. i i haven't looked at i haven't investigated enough to see if it's a one-to-one -one. i actually feel like that would be that could the developers could almost play around with that as a mechanic 
yeah like a save a saving mechanic um I, I will i will check on that and report back next week because yeah if that's possible because it is based off of like skyrim and stuff so they might just have because there's a save game option and i saved but i don't know if that was like hard save or it saved a checkpoint yeah well figure it out get back to us and since it's on game pass which everyone watching should get uh i will probably end up playing it yes. at some point definitely do that um the other game i was going to play and i haven't yet is age of empires 4 released also on game pass i haven't installed i installed it like monday mm. um mostly because i forgot when it was coming out and then uh i just haven't gotten a chance to play it i'm very looking forward to it i played one a butt ton everyone seems to have the cultural touchstone of two um i, I think i played the demo for two and that's that's the only uh yeah i'm pretty sure it was the demo because you you could have the little healer guy who would go hey, uh, oh yeah the hey, uh, and, yeah 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 um and that's <laughs> like the only sort of you said touchstone that's like the only yeah. sort of touchstone that i can have in relation to that game but i always felt like i could I, like i would enjoy it if i played it but i just never sat down and, and grabbed one and played it through yeah it's fun I, I remember as a kid just trying to i would always build like the epic structures for some stupid reason and i would yeah. get enough workers so they lined the complete outside of the structure and were like working on it i'm pretty yeah. sure it was one because it was like roman and egyptian stuff and i think two is medieval and then three is like colonial and then they were gonna make a four because there's that famous i don't know if it's famous famous in video game circles uh advertisement i think it was in a in a magazine that had one two three and four age of empires like oh. lined up and i think it was going to be like world war ii or something um oh, interesting. but this age of empires 4 i believe is uh medieval but it might be more i have no idea i haven't even looked into it so don't don't buy don't buy a beer on me um but those are the games i've been playing this week kyle you have been playing some games would you like to tell me about them yes extensively so buckle up people uh no. um been playing a lot of mass effect legend legendary edition uh i beat one i think three weeks ago and i beat two four days ago and i immediately jumped into three because i remembered just how much i love that series even with all of the issues that the ending of the third game presents um i still love it i think that game is brilliant up until the last like 15 minutes <laughs> um <laughs> and it's so much fun and i i love the the character follow through and the development that they they are able to heap upon the players with that so it just it's a it's a happy place that i can go to uh even though it's dealing with the end of the galaxy which is always fun um who doesn't love a good end of the galaxy experience um True. and then me and my friend vic played escape simulator which is a little tiny five dollar four four or five dollar game on steam and it's basically a virtual escape room that you can play with up to three people in a room but then you can also build your own rooms which i think can have up to 20 players um really fun very sort of frustrating in the same sense that certain escape rooms in real life can be frustrating where mm -hmm. You know, you can ask for hints a little bit. Um, there's no there's no person guiding you. It's just, you know, there's just music playing and you go and search. And you have to figure everything out. There's a little button you can press if you want a hint. Although sometimes I will say, I think one thing that they could do better is if you've already solved up to a certain point, I think the hints need to be aware of that. Because right now it's like there's there can be like three or four hints. And the first hint is just the first puzzle that you have to do. Um, so I feel like it should shift along where if there's like 10 puzzles and you need a hint on the eighth puzzle, you're going to get a hint for the first puzzle. Um, so you, you oh. they, they kind of need, need to, to update that. Like but as soon as you finish for, one puzzle, it should delete that hint. Yes, exactly. And it should just update the, the next slot. Like, hey, here's the next thing you need to do. Um, granted, you can do stuff out of order. But again, it should be aware of, you know, when these four puzzle pieces are connected finally this thing goes off and when that thing goes off it should just say okay wipe it out of the hint thing that's just a little tiny gripe um and then there are some weird glitches where we had um uh, a, a key card that we needed to get got stuck 
under like glass. Oh no. And we couldn't we couldn't get it out. It was just like a graphics thing. So we had to restart. Um which is fine. But you normally get like 10 to 15 minutes per per room and it's cute. Um it's cheap and it's it's fun. It's like a nice little thing to do for an hour or two with friends and um virtually going to an escape room which is not something i thought that i would enjoy but i had a lot of fun with it and then the last thing i played was back for blood uh again with vic and uh, his boyfriend and one of our friends and we had a really good time sort of going through the entire thing we we went through acts one two three and four wow and um that game has some serious issues with difficulty (laughs) because if anybody was watching when Subpixel played it, um, we could not beat like the first mission on Veteran. Uh, it was very, or like the first or second mission on Veteran, which is the second highest difficulty, I think, or the third highest. And the only thing that we could do when we played it on Subpixel was play regular. And that's exactly what we did when we played it with my friends. And it, there's some sort of thing that needs to be done with the difficulty ramp. It's absolutely insane. And I've heard that some people like that, obviously, so, you know, everybody, everybody has a different style of, of difficulty that they prefer. Some people like it to be really punishing, but I think they also locked a lot of the more interesting cards that you can get with the little boosts uh, and, and bonuses that you can get. You need to get a lot of points in order to get those and make it worth your while to actually be helpful when the difficulty is so great so it's kind of like frustrating because you play through something and it's like oh i got i i beat a level i got 40 points that i can use to buy a card or 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 whatever and then you do the same mission on a higher difficulty and you somehow manage to do it and you get like less sometimes like it just doesn't i don't know some of the point systems don't make sense and the difficulty definitely needs to be checked but Overall, with all those complaints said, I did have a really good time playing it with friends. Shooting zombies is just fun. Uh, it's really pretty, and yeah, it was uh, it was a good time. It, it was a little a little wonky at times, but it was fun. So definitely had a grand old time playing that. Difficulty aside, nice, awesome. Yeah, I, I enjoyed the the sub pixel stream we did of it, but I was just like, hey, if you're not going to respect. The fact that I can't play this by myself and earn things yeah. for when my friends are online, I'm I, like it would be like if Destiny I had to play with people online all the time. Like, yeah, it would be a nightmare, and I don't want to. I can't put time into something that's not going to respect my time. And also, I this is probably my fault because I skip a lot of things. I did not understand any of the systems in that game at all, <laughs> and I, was, I, like, I had to have to deal with it. <laughs> I had to have it explained to me um, because there's like you can build decks of cards in the game and each of the cards have some sort of a bonus or a um, like a a team bonus or an individual bonus. And some of them will have really good bonuses. But then along with that, it's like, oh, you can't aim down the sights of your gun because of this thing, which I think is a little weird. Um, But you can build these decks of, I think, up to 15 cards. And depending on which card you have first in your deck that's going to be like the card that you start with so then every time you beat a level you can pick from another one of those cards and then sort of stack them and then once you get the full deck it's like hey i'm at full power now i have i have everything i need for this particular run and you can build decks based on not just the type of player that you are but also the character that you pick because some of the characters have bonuses like there's doc obviously is the medic so you might want more of a support style deck that you build Mm -hmm. for that and then um some of the other characters are more like like a i think his name is jeff i think is like a sniper so he gets like a 10 percent aim down sight bonus so Mm -hmm. you, you build off of that which is interesting but I also had to have that explained to me uh, yeah. because the game did not do a good job of being like, here's how this works. And if, if I mean, maybe it did and I skipped through it, but um, I was very confused when we were playing it on Subpixel and I had played it for like an hour and a half prior to that, just with the box. Yeah. So it's I, definitely, it's, it's got some, some work it needs to be done. I feel like it's how to overcomplicate a perk system 101, yeah. which I, I feel like, if it was more different, the card thing would make sense. But 
in my head and it could be different someone can correct me but in my head i can just kind of convert what they did back to a perk system so it's like what's yeah. the point of making it cards and stuff if you're just going to do a perk system like i feel like you could go 100 they went 50 percent with the card system when they could have gone 100 percent and made something completely different yeah. um yeah that i feel like in four or five years there's going to be a lot of content in that and we're going to be like hey what should we do for extra life or something or some video series and we'll be like what if we play through all of left for dead and back for blood and back for blood 2 and then we do that so yeah i i i do think that there's a lot of good things that they put into the game like i i, I like the weapon upgrade system i like the mm. sort of um in-game currency that you can get and you know you find money when you're playing through copper. levels and you can spend it like yeah copper uh <laughs> great great choice for for money um that's cool but then that on top of the deck stuff on top of some of the weird like the 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 weird like character interactions that happen like so, some of it some of the writing it just doesn't it feels like almost they're trying too hard a little bit um so in left for dead it was like it was almost a quirky thing where it was like oh yeah it's it's coach like that's just coach like yeah like, you just know him in instinctually and in this they tried to be either a little bit more extreme with their characters or flesh them out more and i feel like i just want like a cursory sort of light hearted thing of like this is this character arc that i can expect to see while i'm playing this person and it, it's just more than that so i don't know yeah and like those left for dead characters be, uh, one and two became so popular because it was like less is more they really didn't say that much so you could attribute yeah. a lot to them and then these characters with the advancements we are where we're at today they added so much and to try to maybe accelerate that process and it just had the opposite effect where they just became i mean it's a fine line between characters who are lovable and characters who are annoying and i feel like they didn't dial that in enough. Well, there, there's one character that you can pick. I think it's Holly is her name or something. Oh my gosh, we were, me and my friends were playing through it and I was Holly and someone was talking for like five minutes, just like a stream of consciousness thought. And then I realized, oh, it's my character. <laughs> and and literally when I said, am I talking? And everyone was like, can you get her to stop talking? <laughs> like, is there anything? And I was like, this is so annoying. Like, this is really, really annoying. And oh, it was, it was, it was rough. It was, it was so pretty good. rough, but yeah. So good. Well, uh, folks, that has been all the games we've been playing this week. Um, not too many. Kyle's been filling out his docket. I have been not filling out anything at all, which means it's time for the news. I'm going to play the news theme, and you're all going to listen to it. Here's the news. We're talking about news. It's gaming news. What's up, news? What's up, news? This is my Infinity Cube that I printed on my 3D printer. That's awesome. I started printing uh, fidget toys, uh, so oh. I stopped biting my nails um, <laughs> while I'm working. I also, Silly oh, Putty is great the... for doing that, too. Silly Putty is, is great for everything. Um, I had a, a in, ingrown cuticle or whatever that was oh. killing me yeah. for like three or four days. Yeah. It was rough. Yeah. So. <laughs> um folks it's time for the gaming news uh there's not too much news this week um except there is one thing i didn't include on this list because i thought it was so stupid uh is the thing i thankfully didn't have to cover for work today is that facebook the company has rebranded uh to meta m-e-t-a which is probably the worst the worst so name stupid. I've ever heard in my entire life. Um, so just so it, people are aware, Facebook, joke. the social media is still Facebook. Instagram's Instagram. The parent company. Granted, I 100% agree the parent company should change their name to something else because it's way sure. less confusing. But boy, that but did you watch any of that presentation? No, I saw I, the thumbnail and was like, I don't need to watch this. I don't want to make light of things, but I have never been more close 
to wanting to end it by watching <laughs> that stream. Um, it was it was the most n- near future science fiction corporate business thing I have ever seen. It was folks do yourself a favor and go watch some of it because it is just a nightmare of nightmares and well, okay so i didn't i didn't watch it because i didn't want to but um uh what's his name um mark fred zuckerberg facebook. mark zuckerberg yeah <laughs> i call him fred facebook um <laughs> his book's really good yeah uh fred facebook uh you get this it's like tom where it's like he posts something and it just automatically goes to the top of your news feed so i was scrolling through facebook and saw his way too long ceo post or whatever and he was just talking a lot about the the future obviously of what they want Uh, look here he is again i start up facebook first thing i see is hello meta with you know zombie eyes mark zuckerberg uh robot eyes mark zuckerberg um also does that it says jack there's apparently they have a building called jacker that seems really excuse me I would it, like it to like go it there. Says, it looks like it says Jacker. Jacker? What Hold do they on, do me, there? I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna send you this picture. You know, Facebook, I'm sorry, Meta is a company that I feel like in the future they would have like stress relieving mod like pods. Oh, and they're basically where you just go to whack off during the work day. I, I, they're like Tanga eggs, I, I, but not for Japanese businessmen. <laughs> Okay, there you go. I, so I, I got it, the ding. This, oh, does what it is? say Jacker? Oh, Hacker. Hacker. Okay, I couldn't see the... It no, does really look like you Jacker. Are, you are within reason. It is yeah. an H with definitely one side of the H covered up, so it definitely looks like it says Jacker. <laughs> oh, I need to go yeah. there. Um, yeah, I... Oh just the presentation, because they... They didn't announce the name change till the very end, but they did their whole metaverse thing where it's like they want to create a digital space where people can have uh, like gatherings and storefronts. And they went the whole thing about like eventually having AR glasses that let you let you see other people, but also are transparent enough for you to still do things. But you can which all sounds cool and awesome, but not from from a company like Facebook. Um, yeah. They were also pretty realistic. They're like, hey, these things aren't going to happen overnight. It'll take years to happen. And that's just why we're telling everyone about it now, because we they are they were very open. They want like I feel like they're trying to do some damage to the, the face, repair some damage to the Facebook name. Um, but also, I want nothing to do with anything they do. At I just, all. I, I refuse to buy an Oculus because it's owned by Facebook. Like, they I did, in passing, mention that they're looking into adding other ways to log into Oculus stuff without a Facebook account. Which yeah. someone was saying on my Slack, they were like looking into it. Uh, that one of the things was like, you make a work Facebook account. Oh my gosh. I'm so I actually wish if. So I, I've i struggled with this, especially in the past few years with how volatile Facebook has become just as a social media network. But I have to have Facebook for my job because I have to be able to log into a profile that I have made an admin of a, of a um, company profile that I can then control. I really do not want to do that because I don't want to have a Facebook. Mm-hmm. I'm fine with Instagram, even though Instagram has its own bottle of problems. But I really would love to just delete my Facebook account. So if they could have like a essentially a LinkedIn Facebook, um, I think I would maybe be interested in doing that just so that it's like, hey, here's my work shit. Here's my resume or whatever. I'm using this to run such and such groups. Um, I would do that. But at the same time, I I don't know. It's like it seems like a a a way of doubling down the amount of ads you could serve someone. Like it's just, I I don't know. It it just it feels weird to me. And also, I just don't trust Facebook. Yeah, it's straight up. Like I have to have it for work, but I really don't use it that much. So I try to spend as little time on Facebook as possible. Of course, you know, seeing seeing Fred Facebook all the time whenever I log in is not helping because it's just (laughs) yeah. Other other than work, which. I so I do social media for game, uh, GameSpot. Always want to say the other one. Um, 
I don't you I don't have to post usually like we have social people who post like I just make video yeah. content. Um, the only exception is during like big live events and stuff. We will uh, we will instead of me uploading it to Slack, them downloading it and uploading it to Facebook. I'll do it directly to Facebook. That's the only time I've been on Facebook. Uh, since regularly since probably 2016. Um, yeah. I barely, and I barely go on Instagram either. Also, excuse me, seltzer burp. Uh, <laughs> also having this job, which is, is closely tied to social media has opened a whole new world to me of, I, as someone who doesn't, I rarely, rarely engage with social media posts from a website company not a person yeah and the amount of people that comment on posts that we put out on facebook instagram twitter amazes me because it's an entire world i i've never gone with it's like it's just it's so weird like we posted a thing today and it'll be like someone just straight up like like we posted a cowboy bebop thing I did and someone posts on it like, Oh, this, this doesn't look like a great, uh, doesn't look like a great remake of the anime. And then someone replies to them and has a conversation. And I'm like, this is a whole world. I didn't know existed of people who comment on things. And it's like, is this what, is this what it's like out there? Cause I just, and it's not bad. I'm not talking. I don't want to mean to sound like it's a bad thing. It's just something I've never done. And it's just well, so. So some, sometimes it can be. It, bad. it can be that, bad. Yeah. hundred percent. We have we have a, a mutual friend between I think all of us on Subpixel. Um, Joanna uh, Nilius or Nilius. I can never remember how to pronounce her last name. She's a journalist. Uh, she's worked for Gizmodo. Um, I think she wrote some stuff for Forbes and I forget where she works now, but she's she's great. Um, and the amount of times that she has written an article, gotten it posted by said publication that she's working at, and had to either lock down comments or um, just completely try to ignore them because of the insanity that is replies on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube or whatever, uh, is is astronomical. Because one, people just can't seem to control themselves sometimes and things just start spiraling and you get into these threads and it's it, it's just totally. what happens on social media but for that to happen um on like a company profile i stay away from that shit like i just really yeah. i do not i do and, not engage with that and i'm very happy uh like i'll retweet the stuff i'm proud of or i'll sure. repost it on facebook stuff but i'm happy my name and my user stuff is not attached to a lot of the social posts i build because yeah. i just don't need someone coming in and be like oh you could have compared this cowboy bebop thing to there instead of this one which i'm sorry that i scrubbed through 26 episodes over like an eight hour period to make that video sir or madam um it's so uh, the, the the flip side of that is we would love that to happen for subpixel. Yes, hundred <laughs> percent. Like that would be that would be fantastic because Please. you got you probably got a taste of that when you did your Dwarf Fortress video. Everybody go watch Will's wonderful Dwarf Fortress series. It's true. Um, and I got a tiny, tiny little taste of that when I did my first Star Citizen video, where there was like eighty comments or something. Um, and that's literally the at least those types of videos are mainly opinion videos where it's like, hey. I've experienced this thing. I'm making a video about said thing, put it out there and you hope people will respond. Yeah. That's great. But for, and it's also a personal thing because you are the one producing the video. You're in the video. You're talking about your experience. So it's almost expected that you get those types of replies from people. You don't experience, or you, you hope you don't experience that kind of stuff with just a general like article yeah. or whatever or like video that you put out that's like it's having to do with this thing that's being produced by this huge company and it's not personal in any way it's just a product boom here you go and people still treat it like it's so personal so i just yeah it's it, it gets it gets crazy and i was thinking i probably have a hundred a hundred times more views on my content now but nobody has any idea who i am which honestly <laughs> is perfectly fine with me i yeah. absolutely love that um 
because it, it's cool to see those numbers and not even just for me but the other people on my team like to see something they made and that that it was something they were into that they made and got those views is great like when it's something they're not into and it happened to get views that's just because it's the social media grind like yeah. obviously like we put out a thing about uncharted when uncharted trailer dropped that's gonna get tons of views i don't care about that but like the cool evolution of whoever thing i made that went up and people commented like i'll go read through some of those facebook comments to see what people said because that stuff's cool and that's closer to something like i'm i'm more passionate about and and that's neat uh but it's people watch watch more sub pixel content please it's weird yeah <laughs> please just watch sub pixel uh. stuff I actually was, I was, we, I had a conversation the other day with uh, some friends from college and we were playing Warzone because that's when millennials talk about their feelings is True. when they're shooting people in a video game. Um, and they specifically said that the work that we do here at Subpixel deserves more views <laughs> because it's it's very high quality which i agree i think that it is very high quality i think we do good stuff and he was like yeah i was just surprised you guys have been at it for like two three years and like you're still grinding and i was like yeah i know that's like that's what happens and we are we are not the only people doing this like, there's oh, a yeah. ton of great amazing content out there that deserves views like our friends over at save data um they do they do great work and it's just sometimes there's just so much noise. There's just yeah. so much stuff being pumped out. It's hard to break through. So, and, and I'm amazed, sorry, not to interrupt you, but I am amazed no, no, no. at uh, how many people we do get to watch our content uh, because we have, we don't like seeing how hard at my job people work to get things in front of other people to analyze things, to say, Hey, this is hot right now let's post this, all that sort of stuff that trickles down to me to be like, Hey, make a video with Batman. In it. Um, like that amount of effort reaps rewards. And we don't put any of that effort in the sub pixel as far as social media and marketing. And yet we still get some people makes me real. It makes me know that we're making good content that people like, but our discoverability yeah. is the problem with that. And I think you've always said that Ian's always said that Jake and I have always said it is we make, great content here we're tooting our own horn because we know we're right but it's just our discoverability is trash because like again we're not doing this for money so it's there's not a huge impetus about like none of us are like oh i want to be famous like it'd be cool to be famous <laughs> I, don't give a, I don't give a shit like, yeah you kidding me? it would be uh, cool if we had a thousand viewers but also that would give me so much anxiety <laughs> like oh i welcome God, that yeah. anxiety if it comes but i don't wish for it um so i Again, if, if we were it. relying on this for our well-being, I'm sure we could manage it. But the amount we put into this, uh, I think we definitely reap our rewards, uh, which is great because I think we all love doing this. Except for Ian because he couldn't be here. Um, but <laughs> yeah, lazy. <laughs> no, I, uh, we all love doing this. So definitely check it. That all leads me to say is next weekend is Extra Life. So please tune in so we can raise lots <laughs> of money. Yes, 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 yes. Um, man, we talked a lot about a story that's not even on the news list, but that's, that's okay because there's like <laughs> zero news this week. There's like not that much, not that much to talk about. I think I do want to talk about the Grand Theft Auto remaster yes, trilogy yes. or whatever. Um, November uh, Grand 11th, Theft Auto the out. trilogy, the definitive edition, please. Yes, sorry, I, it, that would be G T A T T T D E. <laughs> so. It's that one, not five, not four, not three, not two, not one. Well, I, I don't know, again, not to interrupt, but I didn't know this until I had to Google the correct uh, name of this game. But there was a GTA Grand Theft Auto, the trilogy game that came out in like 2005. That was these three games. Oh, but I this is that. the it came out for PS2 or whatever. But this is the remaster, yeah. obviously the remaster version. So I didn't. I was like, this title is stupid, but I didn't realize it's, it was actually three. It was actually a game that came out already. That's crazy. I had no, I mean, I guess that's why they have to make that delineation, but that's, that's interesting. Um, yeah. So three games, one release, uh, you're getting, uh, uh, what, um, three uh, San Andreas and Vice, Vice City. City. Yeah. Okay. Vice City, San Andreas and three. and at the price, the low, low price of a full $60. Now, 
I think that's a bit much for the quality of content that they have shown, especially with the fact that there are tons and tons of mods that Rockstar, or I guess I should say 2K, have removed that make the games that are included in this bundle really shine in a way that the the bundle itself does not, uh, which I think is really unfortunate. And I I know that when, when this was originally um, not announced, but people were talking about it because there was listings on like Chinese uh, websites and, and I think Best Buy had a listing. There were, there were like pre leaks before they announced it. So everybody knew it was coming. And we talked about it on local chat, I think maybe two months ago or three months ago. Yeah. And I said, $60 doesn't seem like that much. Now that I've seen the, the, the level of quality that they're putting out for these games, I think it is too much. I think it should be like 40 because it really, in my opinion, I don't think it looks as good as it maybe should. Um, yeah, that's just me. I see where you're coming from. I, I, again, they've only put out one trailer. Mm. I think it looks really good. I like the style. I, some people were complaining. I like the style they went for because it, it, it is the GTA style. It is very cartoony. They didn't get very realistic until uh, Liberty City uh, 4. Um, so I, I'm kind of into the looks of it. Um, they do on the website, if you want, I can read off. Uh, from what I've read, they've added a ton of like little things to make these mm. games really better uh i want to say up front i don't know so san andreas is coming to game pass november 11th three gta 3 is coming to playstation plus december 7th mm. i don't know if you can purchase these games separately or you have to purchase all three together um if you can do them separately i think that's yeah good because like, i that's... i've never played any of these games so i was like oh i'll start with three and then vice city and then san andreas but since san andreas is the one that is going to be on game pass i think i'm just going to start with that depending on how much i like that i might end up purchasing all three um who knows but i will read through some of this stuff here um updated player experience gta style gta 5 style controller layout Improved gunplay and targeting controls, upgraded driving controls. Uh, this is with upgraded, oh, drive-by controls in San Andreas. Updated mm. weapon and radio stations, updated mini-maps uh, with waypoints. Ability to immediately restart a failed mission, which I heard <laughs> a lot of people were very excited about. Yeah. Um, higher resolution textures for characters, weapons, vehicles, roads, much greater detail. Completely rebuilt lighting system and enhanced shadows, reflections, and more. Improved water and weather effects. Enhanced details, trees and foliage. It increased draw distance. And then platform specific features. So 4K resolution and 60 FPS performance for PS5 and Xbox Series X. Uh, NVIDIA DLSS for PC. And then oh, touchscreen okay. camera zooming, pans, and menu selections, as well as gyro aiming. Everyone's favorite. For the Nintendo Switch. Uh, don't buy this game on the Nintendo Switch. Unless Please it's all you have. Then go for <laughs> it. I'm going to get this on the Xbox. Ooh, sexy ladies, Dan. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to stop scrolling uh, before I get in trouble. Uh, I'm looking forward to this. Again, I would be iffy about buying all three as someone who's never played them. Um, granted, I did buy those Mario remasters last year, so... But if I had the nostalgia, I probably would. But I am I'm glad one of them is coming to Game Pass because I can just check it out. Uh, easy. Uh, is this good? Yes. Am I going to play the other two? Maybe not now. Eventually, I'll wait till it goes on sale. I can pop it in the back of my mind. Yeah, I, I think I mean, it's clear that they did put a lot of work into this, um, which is which is great. I just think personally, 60 bucks is too much for for the for the whole bundle. Um, and I also have a thing. I really don't like when companies take massive dumps on modders, especially of games that are as old as the ones that they're they're redoing right now. Um, there's a lot of people who worked really hard to make the player experience better. And the company is basically like saying, I don't care that you did that. We're we are going to do this our way. We're going to make sure that it's official, which 
you know, that's exactly how Nintendo works. So I guess I shouldn't really be surprised, but it yeah. just sucks because, you know, I, I've, I've gotten a lot of fun out of mods that people have made. Um, and I, I think that the modding community at large, especially nowadays, does not get the love that it maybe deserves and is probably past its, its golden age of like the, the early 2000s, late 90s. Like that was sort of the golden age of, of computer mods specifically. But oh, well, you know, I don't have to buy it. So that's the good thing is I can vote with True. my wallet what I want to do. But also, and, and you make a good point, because in an age where the exact same day the Skyrim Anniversary Edition comes out with over 500 community mods built into it, um, there is an avenue for that. Um, yeah. And and at minimum, there's an avenue for not taking legal action against modders who are just trying to make things better. Yeah, um, exactly. And you can acknowledge them, or you don't have to, but don't ruin people's day. Um, moving forward, I'm just going to skip some of these. Uh, Blizzard revealed the new name for the character who was named after someone horrible, whose name I'm not going to give them publicity um even though the character is far more famous than they are uh they have renamed <laughs> their high noon cowboy to cole cassidy ex-porn star cole cassidy ex-porn star cole Ca listen whatever name they chose would not be as good as what it was um it was a lose-lose situation uh unlike the facebook one where they could have picked a better name um i think no matter what they picked it would have someone would have dug up something being like Oh, it's a porn star. Oh, it's a mass murderer. Oh, it's a, like I'm sure they researched the hell out of these names, and this was oh yeah the lesser of two evils. Uh, Cole Cassidy's perfectly fine, um, cowboy name, you know? serviceable. Um, I want to. I genuinely want to know the reasoning, like how they settled on that. That is where my brain's like, oh, like what were those meetings like? Like what? Like, who said it? How far did it get? What names were knocked out? Why this one over another one? Like, was it gut feeling? Was it tested better? Like, all that sort of stuff. Um, why the double C? I do want to know. It's, you know, I, I mean, I, there was a, a Twitter thread by one of the devs at Blizzard or um, uh, who, who specifically worked at Overwatch, and I think that they were explaining, I wish I, I was trying to pull it up before I talked about this, but I couldn't find it. Um, they were explaining basically that everyone on the team wanted the name change just because you're saying this person's name as a character who is also a real person who's done horrible shit to real life people in, you know, in, in that they work with. Um, of course, you don't want to say that person's name or reference that person's name via a character that they are named after. Um, so I totally get it that you, you know, that's, that's triggering to, to people who might've experienced stuff like that, which is yeah. not what you want to have happen. Um, I, I definitely can acknowledge that at the same time, it is, I think a very small thing to do in, in regards to how horrible Blizzard and by extension Activision is. And I think there's a thing that Bobby Kotick just released, uh, a letter regarding progress and commitments made at Activision Blizzard. So I'll have to read through that uh, in, in a little bit. But um, I think that there are bigger issues, but the devs only have so much control over the thing that they are told to be in control of. Uh, so if this was a change that they could make, then great. If it sounds a little funny, it probably wouldn't sound funny to us if he was originally named Cole Cassidy. Like, right. It totally. would be normal. So um i think i think it's just an unfortunate event that happened and we will move forward with overwatch uh cole cassidy will probably be you know a household name probably not um and <laughs> uh also go check out uh at the damn thin guy on twitter has some spicy spicy art of cole cassidy <gasps> it's not actually that spicy. um it's it's but it's really good um and and check it out because it's 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 good stuff gonna check it's that out stuff. um yeah i believe i didn't include this because i i don't really like giving blizzard <laughs> publicity anymore uh yeah. until they figure stuff out um they were denied a thing for appealing and also bobby kodak um reduced his salary down to like sixty thousand a year which is all good and stuff and they canceled bonuses and everything but someone also pointed out he just got like a 150 million dollar payout like 
two yep. weeks before this. So I'm like, yep, hey, go screw yourself. Oh, big big deal for him, you know. Um, <laughs> and then in final Blizzard news, I'll add this quick: they canceled BlizzCon 2022 to focus on games and team support. Um, do they do that thing where they name it for the year that it's not? Oh, it was going to be in February. That's why. Um, oh, gotcha, 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 gotcha. I wasn't sure if they named it stupidly. Yeah, 2020 and... Oh, that is sexy artwork you sent me. <laughs> um, 2020 and 2021 were already canceled due to COVID, and they prematurely canceled 2022. I mean, of course you would. You're in an ongoing lawsuit about things people experienced at BlizzCon's like that recruiter girl and all that stuff. So yeah, yeah it's all gross. Um, so that's it's that. Rough, it's rough out there for, for Blizzard Activision or Activision yeah. Blizzard. Sorry. But. Um, switching over to some PlayStation news. Uh, there was a state of play yesterday. It was, it wasn't bad. It just was boring because I, I mean, nothing against these games. It just wasn't anything exciting for PlayStation. Um, exclusive. I, I, I didn't even know about it. Yeah, so I'm literally <laughs> learning about it right now. We were gonna do the the Nintendo Direct thing where Ian doesn't watch it, and then we kind of surprise him <laughs> with the news. And he messaged yeah. me, he's like, "Hey, is it worth doing that now?" And I go, "Not at all." <laughs> like, <Not> really? No. <laughs> the the thing from I'm glad the Let It Die devs have are putting out a new game. Uh, Let It Die was a really cool game, and they deserve to put out more video games. And I like their style. The little devil inside looks really, 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 really good. Uh, and I want to play that a lot. And then there were a couple other games. You can look them up. I don't remember them because they probably weren't great. Free to play Kart Racer, which <laughs> looked kind of good. Uh, Sony also formed the PlayStation PC label for its PC games push. People noticed on Steam that instead of PlayStation Mobile as the publisher came out as PlayStation PC. Uh, Then this article goes ahead and quotes uh, Jim Ryan on some stuff he said in early 2021 about uh, moving towards uh, PC content for PlayStation stuff. And then I saw some data from, I forget where it was. It was on, it might've been Nibel on Twitter that um, the amount of people that own both a PS5 and a powerful PC is like 8%. And then like a PS4 is like 20% or something. So by putting, because people always make the argument they're going to lose out on PlayStation sales, but it's, it's higher, higher uh, percentage of people who don't own it and they will get far more sales if they release it on PC. Because also those people who own it on PS5 or PS4 might buy it again on PC anyways, like. People who own Death Stranding twice. I, I did that. Yeah, I mean, I I didn't do that for Death Stranding, but I've definitely done that for GTA Five, where it was like we had it in college, I think, and I had I got it for three sixty, and then oh, you know what I did that for? I did that for Bioshock Infinite, where I bought it for three sixty, and then bought it for PC, and then I think I bought it when I had my PlayStation Three, and I I bought, yeah. bought, I like bought I, it so many times. But also I, through I, buying and pre or. Uh, giveaways i think i own alien isolation on (laughs) i think i own it on epic steam maybe gog ps4 quote or ps4 probably ps5 uh xbox and i don't think it came out on 360 so i wouldn't have that one but that's a game that i on every library i ever look through i have alien isolation i'm like i don't want to play it stop (laughs) I it's too scary for me. I got like ten minutes into it, and I was like, I'm not "You know it. <laughs> that game? I I played through that game, and I I don't do scary games very well. Uh, that game takes a really long time to get actually scary. Uh, if you I, know what's happening. Uh, and I think it's just the atmosphere. So like, yes, it's a hundred percent the atmosphere. But as I found out with Ian when he tried to brute force, uh that game it's just not scary if you know like kind of what's happening and it's not yeah. until like three or four hours into the game when you're in the station and the alien is free roaming which is a huge aspect of that game that it it gets actually scary because uh Vinny and abby at nextlander have been playing through it mm-hmm. and i've been watching it and it's like she they're in like three or four episodes now and they're still not at the point when the alien is just free roaming and it's it's not that scary yet but i guess maybe 
I so I didn't know that going into it. I I've seen like bits and pieces of like, oh, hey, this here's a here's a section where the guy's you know running away from the alien or something. That's fun to watch. It's not fun for me to play that because one, the original Aliens, one of the greatest movies or the original Alien movie, one of the greatest movies of all time, is still scary as hell. Like yes. it still gives me the creeps. Um, and I think the game does such a good job of recreating like the. the the level of detail that they put into i forget what the ship is called um uh, uh, in, in, the, in the game yeah something like that is but it is absolutely astronomically insanely good and i think because of that there's also that heightened sense of fear that you feel while watching the movie is like 10 times worse for me and i don't really do horror games that much um other than you know my wonderful playthrough of uh, <laughs> patty what was it called? Poppy's Playroom. Poppy Poppy Playroom. Um, or Playtime or whatever. Yeah, yes. Poppy Playtime. Um, again, which had that similar aspects to like the level of detail that I'm talking about. But man, th- that alien isolation just scares the crap out of me. I think maybe if I tried to brute force it, it would be less scary. And I do know that there's like robots that you fight or robots like, are the like, worst part. Like there's there's like other stuff than the aliens that are in the game yeah. as enemies, but um man that just scares the crap out of me i think i think the concept of alien put into a video game is like my worst nightmare like it's just it's just yeah and there's there's sections of that there's like a whole core reactor thing where you have to like put it into meltdown or turn it off the meltdown and Mm -hmm. those that aliens siren is going off the klaxon yeah yeah and there's something in horror games when things are loud and something's chasing you yeah. that you oh. you like lose all sense and that yeah that game i i actually installed it on my xbox because i think i think i'm gonna watch karen play through it because she really wanted mm. to um but yeah that game absolutely nails everything i remember not liking the ending very much because it kind of insinuated some things i did um, i did watch the ending on youtube and thought it was really lackluster i was yeah. like that's it like, and that's it kind of added a thing to aliens that kind of or to xenomorphs that would negate the first movie in a sense yeah. and i was like why are you doing this are they are they making another one i don't know they should yeah i feel like they definitely should um i don't even know what that team does now um, did they get incorporated into some probably. i feel like someone bought them i don't yeah. know yeah um did you uh do you want to talk about anything else or do you want to get out of here it is 10 3 i, I kind of I kind of think we're done. I think the yeah. only other thing I would, I would, we could, we can mention real quick two things. Um, uh, Nintendo got data mined, and there's some new games that are possibly, potentially, probably coming out for the N64 app on the Switch, uh, on Nintendo Switch Online. One being Majora's Mask, one being the original Smash, one being Wave Race, and the other being mario party i think all the originals for the n64 yeah. it's um, essentially they they found a spreadsheet that is in alphabetical order so you can mm-hmm. kind of plug and play what would fit where and uh so it's not a hundred percent but uh there's two blank spots after super mario 64 so super smash brothers and and uh something else no it's not super mario party what anyways that would fit there and then obviously above ocarina of time it would fit majora's mask and they've already yeah, mentioned it's coming so yes um so that exciting uh potentially uh i have some issues with nintendo's online stuff but we that will be for another local chat uh and then of course because ian's not here which means we can talk about cd project red Yay! Um, they have announced an ambitious game coming from <laughs> uh, their newly acquired studio in uh, where is I forget where the studio was located. But anyway, that's the thing that's happening. If you guys don't remember, CD Projekt Red was responsible for the greatest game of all time, Boston. Gwent. No, um, uh, is it Boston? Yeah, the molasses yeah. flood. That's what because it it's uh, um, it's Bioshock people, Halo, Guitar Hero, and Rock, rock Band. Gotcha. And they made uh, Flame in the Flood and Drake Hollow, which I remember Flame in the Flood being pretty good. Flame in the Flood is f- Flood. Flame Flame in the, the Flood Fog. is great. I have the soundtrack on vinyl. It's very, very Ooh. good. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I think um, that's it for sweet. The, the news. I will start the music. Uh, oh, people can't hear that, can they? I'm going to pause it. 
gonna pause it. The button. It went away. Folks, oh, yeah. thank you so much for joining us. Uh, whether you're listening to us on your phone or the YouTube or you're here live or you're eating beans, thank you so much for tuning in and supporting us. If you want to actually support us, um, you don't have to, but uh, you can sub to us on Twitch or you could, uh, that's twitch.tv slash subpixel team or on Anchor, uh, Anchor FM slash local chat. You can uh, actually support us there. I think you can do custom amounts. I'm not actually sure, but feel free to give us money there. Uh, Kyle Bailey, thank you so much for joining me tonight it was a blast having you ian we miss you please come back with your bad opinions so we look better um saturday night we were watching a scary movie uh we haven't confirmed what it is ian was looking into a scary movie that isn't actually that scary because like him with the video games i can't do movies um (laughs) so we will try to find something 9 p.m. Eastern on Saturday, and then next week, uh, not sure what we're doing, but the 6th and 7th, we will be doing Extra Life, so definitely tune in for that. I will be at the studio having a blast, uh, doing all sorts of things. Uh, definitely want to check out Age of Empires this weekend, and uh, all sorts of other things. Got to work on those overlays for the Extra Life uh, and record my thing for you. I need yes, to do that as well. That. I should have just done that during this. We could have done it right uh, now. That would have been funny. Uh, Folks, thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you all next week.